Dreallday.com. What's going on, y'all? Dre Ball with Dreallday.com. This is an update video for a lot of you out there. A lot of people out there who watch the stuff that I put out on YouTube. Maybe you follow me on Twitter or you on my Facebook page. A lot of you don't really know you know what I do as a basketball player. A lot of people who follow me, I get a ton of questions from people who think the only thing I do is make these videos on YouTube. And don't get me wrong, making the videos on YouTube is fun. You know, along with my website and all the social media, you know, the hoop handbooks, the jump manual, the training programs and occasionally training players and things like that. Like that's all cool with me. That's all good. But as far as playing goes, I'm a serious basketball player. For those of you who I'm sure most of you can tell I'm a serious basketball player. I wouldn't be in the gym doing all this stuff if I wasn't, you know, for real about the game. But anyway, a lot of you don't know that I'm a professional player. I started my professional career in I graduated from college, the Division Three College in two thousand and four. You can read all my history on my website, DreAllDay.com. Also on my book. It's called Buy a Game. It's completely free. You can read the PDF online. It's DreAllDay.com slash buy a game. Or you could just Google it. It'll it'll come up. But anyway. I started my career, I graduated in 2004, I didn't play my first year out of school, I worked full time. I started my career in 2005, I played in Lithuania. Between 2005 and 2013, that's been eight years, I've signed five professional contracts. I played in Lithuania, I played in Mexico, I played in Germany, I played in Montenegro, I played in the United States. I've been to a ton of basketball camps, exposure camps, tryouts, workouts, some of them went good. Some of them went bad. Some tryouts where I ended up, something ended up good happening. Some tryouts, workouts, camps where nothing really popped off. So that's really what I'm about to talk about right now, what's going on in the present moment. So a lot of people understand. So me personally, coming from the background that I came from, I started playing basketball when I was 14. Didn't play in high school until I was a senior. Averaged two points a game as a senior. I didn't get no playing time. Went to a Basically walked on to what was athletically a JUCO, but it wasn't a JUCO academically because you only play two years of sports at that school for whatever reason. Got recruited to a Division three school where I finished my college career. Actually didn't play my senior year at that school. Then started pro career a year later. And in eight years, if we count this year, that'd be nine years. I signed five contracts, not counting this season, if I sign this year or not. But I think I've done pretty well considering where I came from. But that's not, I'm not here talking about no moral victories. You know, like Jay-Z said, moral victories is for minor league coaches. But anyway, what's been going on since then? Yeah, those of you who have not read my website or been following me for a long time, or maybe I put out so much content that you kind of forget some stuff as it gets replaced by the new stuff, which I completely understand. I ain't slowing down for you to catch up, but I understand it. I've been to, like I said, a bunch of pro camps. I wrote about all of this stuff on my website. So you haven't been to my website, which is called DreAllDay.com. You can get a whole bunch of information. There's a page on there called Guides, Tips, and Helps, where I basically cover every single question you could ask is covered on that page. From pro basketball questions, I'm talking salaries, I'm talking camps, I'm talking teams, I'm talking agents, I'm talking how, how things go when you're playing overseas. All of that stuff is covered there. Playing issues for you young players, not getting playing time, how to deal with coaches, you want to walk onto a college team, parents out there, your diet, your, nu your nutrition, all of this stuff is covered on my website, DreAllDay.com. There's a bunch of information on there. I've been building that website up for years. There's a ton of info on there. I, mean, I don't know how many times I'm going to say it. But anyway, what's going on right now? So, last month, this is about a month and a half and change ago, you know, the summer is serious thing happened in New York. I got selected by Nike Basketball to play in the Summer Series game. If you don't know about it or didn't hear my recap, go to my channel. There is a playlist called Summer Is Serious. I made a four-part video series recapping the entire event. That was in New York. That was August 16th. So August 16th, I'm in New York. That was a Saturday. I mean, actually, the 17th was a Saturday. I usually get a haircut on, on Saturdays. So that week... My plan was, you know, Saturday's the day after the game or even the day of the game, I'm going to go somewhere in New York, Manhattan, just give me a haircut. But because the event was so crazy, and just stick with me, y'all, because this is all part of the story. The event was so crazy. It was so much stuff. We was doing back to back to back. We had no free time, so I ended up not getting a cut that week. 
So when I came back to Miami, because that's where I live, Miami, on September 18th, I was thinking to myself, all right, so either I'm going to get a cut this day, Sunday, because once a week, and then just, you know, just be a day off, or I thought at the end of the month, I already knew at the end of August, I was on my way overseas. So I said to myself, okay, well, forget it. Why not just let it grow? I'm just going to let my hair grow till I get overseas somewhere. And once I get settled down wherever I'm going to be, I'm going to get a cut then. So I'm going to just let my hair grow a little bit. So I posted I posted a few pictures, maybe Instagram, that y'all might have seen. If you're not following my Instagram, the link is down here in the description. But it's Dre Baldwin, at Dre Baldwin, one word. And I posted a picture, and somebody was like, damn, you got hair. You know, because I had started to let my hair grow. But the thing is... I come to find out after about three, four weeks of letting my hair grow, I noticed that I'm starting to go thin, like right in the smack in the middle. Like it's not crazy, it's not even obvious, you wouldn't even notice it. But I seen a friend of mine the other day and I showed her and she was like, Yeah, it definitely is. It definitely looks like you're going thin there. But I was like, My dad hair, my dad's not even going bald. So I don't even know why. But then she told me that you inherit that gene from the from your mom's side of the family and all the men on my mom's side of the family are bald or gone bald so that's par for the course but anyway that's off the topic so I knew that I was going to be going overseas at the end of August I went to Slovakia in Slovakia I was there if y'all didn't see the video I posted a few months ago it was a camp called the Euro Pro Camp it was in Bratislava Slovakia uh, some people that I have a relationship with from some prior business I've done basketball were putting on this camp. So I went out there, actually, I went out there before the camp actually even started. A few days, maybe a week or whatever before the camp started because I wanted to work out with some teams, you know, get myself acclimated, see what I can make happen, basically. So I went out there, I actually practiced with the team at uh, Inter Bratislava, which is in the first league in Slovakia. Some of you who follow basketball over there know that team. I worked out with the I worked out with the B team and with the A team. The B team, I wasn't really trying to get on the B team, but it just so happened they had practice that day. So I went in there and practiced with them. You know, we played some full court five on five. Uh met Fred. Y'all might have seen the video. I don't know if I put the video out yet by the time this video comes out. But we played some one on one. Fred was actually working out with the B team himself, but he'd been watching me on YouTube for a long time. Once we started talking, he kind of recognized who I was, I guess, by my voice. He said he knew my face from somewhere, but he wasn't sure. But when I started talking, he said, I knew I knew you from somewhere. And then he realized that. So I worked out with that team, worked out with the A team. They actually had a bunch of injuries, so we couldn't even, we didn't even have a full team. It was only like five or six of us that day. So we did a ton of drills. And during those drills, their coach, whose name I don't recall, but he speaks you know, great English. He's fluent in English. He had us doing a bunch of drills, but the footwork is similar to the stuff we do in America. I'm talking about first steps going without taking a dribble first, spin moves, jump shots. Basically, a lot of shit that I'll be doing on YouTube. We ain't do nothing that I haven't done on YouTube before. And the interesting thing I was thinking the whole time was I hear from players sometimes commenting on YouTube, like, oh, you can't do that in Europe, or they'll call walk. But obviously you can. So what I'm seeing is that the teams, not the teams, but the game, the FIBA game, is starting to relax their rules to be closer to the American game. Whereas I wasn't sure which way it was going to go. I knew eventually those two games would have to merge. But I thought maybe the American game might change their style to be more like FIBA. But what's happened is the FIBA game, which is everybody outside of the United States, they're kind of changing their game to be more like our game. They pushed their three-point line back a few years ago to be closer to the NBA's 23 feet, 9 inches. The NBA's 23 feet, 9 inches. FIBA, I forget what they pushed it back to. It's not that far yet, but it's further than it was. They changed the lane from the trapezoid to more like the rectangle like they got in the United States. And now they're relaxing kind of how they call the traveling rules and stuff like that because it allows for more offense, basically. That's basically what it does. Moving the three-point line back spaces the floor, making that lane smaller. I don't even remember what making the lane smaller does, but it does something. <laughs> and relaxing the rules with the traveling and stuff allows for the offensive player to be able to do more. There's more that freedom for the offensive player, which makes it harder to guard somebody, which basically is going to produce more points. They're not going to come out and say that, but that's basically what's going to happen. So anyway, I'm out there. I worked out with the team. That team, the Inter Bratislava, they already had their two imports for the season. They actually are the defending champions of the league in Slovakia. 
they got a, an American guy from New York. He had just signed there when I got there. And I got there and worked out with them. We actually both came into the country on the same day. So he just got there, and the other American was on the team last year. So it's not like they was looking for a new player or nothing. But I just worked out with them because they was around. There was a few other teams I was going to work out with. We ended up not working out before the camp started. So we get to the Euro Pro Camp in Bratislava. Now, I'm going to keep it real with the Euro Pro Camp in Bratislava. As I said, there are a friend of mine who was involved in putting that camp together. And I don't, I'm not going, I'm not going to make it personal and trash that person, but this camp was not as good as I thought it was going to be. First of all, with all the scouts, managers, coaches, we'll just call them decision makers. When I say decision makers, I'm talking about scouts, agents, GMs, coaches who come to camps to find players. Not as many of them showed up to the camp as was advertised for the camp. Now, I put out a video. The reason I'm telling you this is because I put out a video before the Euro Pro Camp pushing this camp. I told you I was going to be there, and I was there, and I basically extolled the virtues of this camp as it was sold. And the way that the camp was sold is not the way that the finished product came out. And I want to keep it real with y'all because I need to maintain you know, my integrity. When I come up here and I push out a program, when I say the Hoop Hammer is going to help you with your game, you could talk to anybody who's used the hoop handbook. It's helped them with their game. When I say the jump manual is going to make you jump higher if you follow the program, you can ask someone who followed the program. The jump manual made them jump higher. These are facts. When I say follow my drills, listen to the motivations and mental tips stuff I put out, can help you increase your game. If you take if you take responsibility for increasing your game, this is true. Because if it wasn't true, y'all wouldn't be watching these videos. I wouldn't have the subscribers I have. People wouldn't keep watching everything I put out, even though I put out so much content, people wouldn't keep up with it. They wouldn't care if the stuff I was saying wasn't real. You know, a fad, somebody could come out for a week and put something out and get a bunch of attention. But if it's bullshit, you're not going to still be putting stuff out, you know, seven years later. I started putting videos on YouTube in 2006 before YouTube was YouTube, back when people was just doing it to be doing it. Now YouTube got, y'all know, y'all see the ads on the videos and all that stuff. They wasn't even doing that back when I started on YouTube. It wasn't no ads, it wasn't no money involved, it wasn't none of this social media, it wasn't no Twitter, it wasn't no Facebook, none of that shit. It was MySpace <laughs> back then. But anyway, the reason that I'm telling you this, the reason I'm telling you what I'm going to tell you about the Euro Pro Camp, I'm not finished, is that I need to keep it real with y'all because when I put something out there, if it turned out to not be what I said it was, then I need to let y'all know that that's the situation and I'm going to let you know why. So at the Euro Pro Camp, like I said, the number of decision makers that the camp sold itself on having were not there. They did not have the number of decision makers they claimed to have. And I talked to people who ran the camp about this very situation. Like the second thing about the camp is that something that they couldn't control is that the number of players that they ended up having and the type of players they ended up getting was not enough to put together a serious professional camp. And what I mean, it was less than 20 players at the camp total. Any of y'all who have ever been to an exposure camp know how it works. Basically, all the players get there, they split y'all up into teams, and over the course of the camp, whatever it is, one day, ten days, those teams play against each other. So it's campers against campers against campers against, camp against campers. So they put you on teams with other people who came to the camp, y'all play against each other. So basically what you need is a mix of players of different sizes and positions so that you can put a team teams together, different groups of teams. A couple of years ago, I went to the uh, Elite European Basketball Showcase. That was in Pula, Croatia. I actually got injured during that camp, so I missed most of the game action. But the best thing about that camp is that I had two seven-footers on my team. I was basically playing a point guard or shooting guard for most of the camp. And the best part about it was that the mix of players we had, I was able to play the position that I wanted to come out there and play and prove that I could play to show the decision makers that, yo, this is the guy you want. Y'all understand that. So when we get to the Euro Pro Camp, what happens is everybody was a guard. I'm six feet, four inches. There was two people at the camp taller than me. One guy was about six, five, six, six, and the other guy was about six, seven. And the thing about this is both of them were guards. As I talked to both of them personally, I asked the guy, what position do you normally play? He was like, two guard. <laughs> and the other guy, I didn't actually ask him. But I could tell by the way he played that he's like a, a wing, either a two or a three man. At the worst, he's a three man. He definitely ain't no four man. 
he's dribbling, shooting, you know, doing his ball handling moves and all that stuff. So the thing is, when you go to a camp, something that can happen, I talked about this when I did the four or five part video series about going to professional camps. Sometimes you can go to a camp and you end up, even though you're a guard, if you like 6'4 or taller and you want to play guard, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I mean, LeBron James, 6'8", Kobe, 6'6", you know, there's plenty of 6'7", two guards. Paul George, 6'8", he a two guard. So there's plenty of guards. There's nothing wrong with being a guard if you 6'8". The thing is, if you 6'8", and nobody else there is your height, they're going to put you in the post because you're the only, you're the only big guy in there. And that's fucked up. It fucks you up because you came there to prove you can play guard. And you couldn't control the fact that no other big people showed up to the camp. So this is what happens. This is what happened at the Euro Pro Camp. I actually got a friend of mine who's like six seven. He likes to play the point. He went to a camp. He went to a D League tryout, right? And it wasn't no big people there. They had him playing center. He wanted to prove he could play point. Like he ain't gonna play center in the D League at six seven. But since it was nobody else there to put him in his proper position, he got bullshitted. He ended up wasting you know, hundred fifty bucks and it trip to wherever he had to go for the camp and it didn't end up you no know, happening the way that he wanted it to happen even if he played great at center what the fuck the deal are you going to do with a six seven center you know what i'm saying so your pro camp had all guards everybody there was like six four or shorter and the two guys that was taller than me was both guards so we all guards and it's like 12 of us right so this is what they do instead of splitting us up into teams they put us all as one team so you got 12 guards on one team, and then they called in a couple of teams from Slovakia that play in the league to play against us. Now, the two teams we played against, the first team we played, I don't remember the names of the two teams, but the first team we played kicked our ass by 60 fucking points. They blew us out. They ran us out the fucking gym. And it wasn't just because they was tall. Like They was bigger than us, definitely. That was part of it, but their guards was beating our guards off the dribble. Like I was playing at this camp, we played two official games. I played power forward and center basically for the whole camp. No small forward, no shooting guard, no point guard. So I didn't even get to play my game and show my game the way that I wanted to at this camp, which is the reason why I was disappointed in the Euro Pro Camp and the final product that they put out. So the first game we played, this team kicked our ass by 60 points. They just ran us out the fucking gym. They bust our ass at every position, every position, from point guard to center. And if they had big guys. Like I said, they got a few dunks and all that stuff. They killed us on the glass, but their guards were busting our ass too, so it wasn't just the big guys. Second game, we played some other team from the league. We beat them by two points. Score was like 122 to 120, so it was a shootout game with a double or triple overtime. I play again, I play power forward all of this game. So I'm setting I'm like setting screens. I'm like doing screen and roll, you know, Chris Bosch or you know Kevin Love, screen and pop, pick and pop, shooting threes, screen and roll to the basket. You know, I'm not getting the pass on the roll, man, or nothing. <laughs> I'm guarding these big dudes who like six eight, six nine. I'm giving up forty pounds of these dudes. I'm trying to box them out and not foul them when they try to post up and score front in the post. Oh, to use my athletic ability. I mean I'm a versatile player. So I could guard a power forward in a pinch if I need to. I could front a guy and keep him from getting the ball in the paint because I'm long, I'm athletic. I can get up there and deflect uh, a lob pass over the top. You know, I can box a guy out. I ain't trying to do it for the whole game, but I can if I have to. In this situation of this camp, with the personnel we had, you know, it was only inevitable I was going to be playing that position. So me and the 6'7 dude and the 6'6 six, six dude, we was the big, we was the rotating big man for the whole camp. So that whole camp, between the four and five positions, one of us was on the court at all times. And then sometimes we went small where they brought another guy who was like a guard. So it was really like four guards pretty much. And then one quote-unquote big guy who was really a guard. So that's how we ended up playing the two games at the camp. I actually do have a full game video that I'm going to put out. It's going to take a minute. I got some other video that's in the pipeline, like this one. Once I get all the videos out the pipeline, then I'll put the full game out. As people don't know, putting full basketball games on YouTube takes a long fucking time. Editing the video, rendering it, and actually uploading it to YouTube. like It could take an entire day to upload a video to YouTube that's that long. But I am going to put a full game out. This is against a professional team at a professional camp. The only, uh, what's the word, the only thing about it is I'm playing power forward and center the whole game. So, but I'm going to put it out, and you can draw your own conclusions, leave your comments, because y'all be asking me for full games. So I'm going to put it out there, and you know whatever you want to say or think, 
Leave it in the comments. Let me know. It's all good. So anyway, that's what happened at the Euro Pro Camp. So how do I feel about the camp? I got to give it a thumbs down. I'm disappointed in the way the camp went. Like The decision makers didn't show up. The players, they couldn't really control, but the decision makers didn't show up to the camp. And a lot of and the people who ran the camp, they weren't even around for most of the camp. And I talked to, like I said, I have a friend who works at this camp. I told them, like, I'm not personally mad at you, but but the way that this camp went out, the way this camp ended up going, you had to understand this looks bad. Like this reflects bad on you. And they said, you know, they probably gonna not have the camp so late in the year. Next time they probably have it earlier in the summer. So those of you asking me, are they gonna do the Euro Pro Camp again? I think there's a 90% chance that they will do it again, but it's not guaranteed just yet because you never know where people are going to be a year from now. Business-wise, somebody might be somewhere in a whole different part of the world or in some other capacity in business. Maybe they drop out of basketball, period. So we don't know, but if they do have it next year, it will be earlier in the summer for those of you who were asking. Now, camp ends. I was actually going to go back to the United States. I was like, all right, I'm going back to the United States because... Ain't nothing pop off here. Like I said, it wasn't no decision makers there. It was a few, you know, they claimed, who I didn't see, <laughs> who were there. But anyway, this guy that I know from some previous business i had done, he hits me up, I think, Friday. I was going to leave on Sunday. Whatever, I don't know the dates, but Sunday I was going to leave. He hit me up on Friday. Actually, I hit him up. Somebody told me he was there, that he was looking for me, but I didn't see him because I had left the gym. I emailed him like, what's up? He was like, you know, I got a guy with a team in this country. He wants you to come try out. I was like, cool. Give me more information. Let me know where and when, how it's all going to go down, all the business details of it. But I need you to give me this information no later than Sunday afternoon because I am flying back to the United States if nothing out here pops off. You understand that? So this guy, I've dealt with this guy before. He's one of them dudes where you ask him a specific question and you tell him you need the information by a certain time. And you don't hear from the dude till five hours or next day after the date you asked him for the information. So I'm in the airport. This is uh, all the places that I went on this this adventure that I'm telling you about. That's why this video is going to be so long. I went from, I right, started in Miami, flew out of Atlanta, uh, Rome. I was in Rome, Italy, Vienna, Austria, Bratislava, Slovakia, uh, Paris, France. Then back to the States, New York, Miami. But anyway, I spent time in all these places, either extended stays in the airport that were not planned for whatever reason, which ain't got nothing to do with basketball, <laughs> people that I know, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of shit that went on, on this trip. So anyway, this guy hits me up. I'm sitting in the airport, Vienna, Austria, 10 o'clock p.m. Sunday night. This guy emails me back. I told him to hit me up by Sunday afternoon because I was leaving. This guy hits me up. He's like, yeah, it's a team out here. They're just entering the league. They're not sure if they're going to play in the first league or the second league, but they want you to come try out for a week. Now, the thing is, if I was going to come try out for a week, I would have to change my flight plan if I ended up flying back and not staying with the team. You understand? It would have cost me like 400 bucks just to change the flight. So that's 400 would have cost me there, and then I would have had to actually get to the city because Slovakia is actually a pretty big country in terms of area, land mass is actually pretty big. And this city where this team was at was kind of far from where I was at, and I'm in Vienna, Austria, which is like right across the border from Slovakia. It would have been about a five-hour train or bus ride just to get to the city. I get on the phone with the coach of this team. And I'm like, you know, y'all going to pay for the transportation? Y'all going to pay for my flight? They wasn't going to pay for none of it. They wanted me to pay out of pocket to go and try out for them. They said they would have put me in a hotel and given me food. But what y'all got to understand is that when a team tells you that, <laughs> depending on who you're dealing with, that might not mean shit. That might not even be a good thing. And this is, this is intuition that I have because I've been in the game so long. I've been in so many situations, dealt with so many people. As soon as they hit me up and told me this, the first thing that came in my mind was, I've seen this movie before. Like, Dre, you've seen this movie before. Now, the first thought, all of you who are listening right now who've been following along, you might be thinking to yourself, okay, well, shit, Dre, take the offer. Go try out for this team. You get on a pro team. You know, extend your career. Keep playing. Get yourself some game video. Get yourself in a better situation for the following year and all that. But y'all have to understand that there are a lot of things that factor into this. Number one. I'm a grown man. Like 
I had to live like an adult in season and out of season. If I'm going to invest five hundred dollars and I have no there's no there's no downside protection here. If I go out there and the team is bullshit, or let's say they don't have no money, they want to play in the second league, they can't even afford to pay me anything reasonable. And by reasonable I can't I'm not gonna give you a dollar range, but it gotta be something that makes sense for me, for my personal situation, for every player out there. Those of you who play overseas, those of you who have adult lives in the United States, and you have situations where you might be able to play overseas, y'all can understand this. So some of you younger people, y'all might not understand this, but when you get into your mid-20s, your 30s, you will understand this. That When you're living like an adult and a situation is presented to you where you could do something else, maybe it's something that you love to do, but you got to make it a business decision as well as an emotional decision, y'all will understand this. If that team says, or if they just say, we don't like you, which is something a team will say even if they do like you but they can't afford you, they'll just say, we don't like you, to make it more concrete. Let's say that happens. Let's say they offer me something that is ridiculous. Let's say the hotel that they got me staying at, they want me to stay there for the season and the living conditions are fucking terrible. Let's say any of these things happen because I have no guarantees. There's no contract here. There's nothing in writing that they have to adhere to. You understand this? It's basically them saying, this is what we're going to do. You can take it. You can leave it. At that point, I had to say to myself, I had to check out of the emotional decision, which is go play basketball professionally overseas, possibly, if I end up playing with this team. And I had to make it more of a logical decision. Does this make sense business-wise for me to invest $500 when this team, it sounded kind of, it didn't sound right. You understand? This is basically intuition. Y'all all have intuition. You ever been in a situation in your life, you can think back. I'm sure everybody watching this video has where something came up to you where emotionally you like, yeah, this is perfect. But deep down in your gut, the first thing your instinct told you was this don't sound right. This don't feel right. Something ain't right about this person. Something ain't right about the way they look, the look in their eye, the way they talk, the way they walk. Something ain't right. But you went against your intuition and did it anyway, ended up fucked up. I know everybody watching this video has a situation like that. Me, I've been in, like I said, with basketball, I've been in situations like this before where I let the emotions make the decision. I ignored my intuition, I ignored my gut instinct, did the other thing, and it ended up wasting time, money, opportunities, situations in basketball. So knowing that, knowing that, that's the first thing that came to my mind was my intuition, and I decided a while ago that when my instinct tells me something, I'm going to follow it. So at that point... I had to turn down the offer. I turned down the offer. This is in, I'm in Vienna, Austria. I ended up, uh, ended up in Paris for a little bit. Uh, ended up in New York. Spent the, spent the day in New York City. <sighs> right now, I'm in Miami, Florida. As I'm recording this video, I am in Miami. So what's the situation for the season? Actually, before I even get into that, let me go back a little bit. When I was out there in Bratislava for the Euro Pro Camp, there were a couple other players who were close to my age, late 20s, early 30s. I'm 31 years old, for those who don't know. I turned 32 in February of 2014, February 3rd. So you can send me a gift if you wish. Excuse me. And I'm talking to players out there, and there was a guy who was telling me the same thing. He was like, you know, I got a business back home where I make, I know I'm pretty much going to make X amount of dollars each month. If a team out here, and he was saying, you know, teams have been making me offers the last couple years, which I've had to turn down, because if I take these offers, I can't run my business from back home, so I give up that money, and I only can live off this money. So if a team offers me something that's less than what I'm making at home, I can't take the offer, you know, because he's a grown man. Like, I'm a grown man, I'm an adult, I'm married, you know, I got a family, I got to think about all of this stuff. All of this factors in. It's not just, oh, I can go play basketball overseas. Maybe when you're 23, when I got my first deal at 23, it didn't matter how much money they offered me. I remember the first deal they offered me, but the offer wasn't shit. Like, it was an offer that I probably wouldn't take today. But what did I have to lose then? You know, I was living in my parents' house, <laughs> you know, rent-free, basically. I mean, I was paying my mom something at that point, but pretty much rent-free. If I went and told my mom I ain't got the money, she wasn't going to kick me out. You understand, rent-free, I ain't have no responsibilities, no family, no kids. I still ain't got no kids. You know, I could have took that. When you're 23, you can't take it because you ain't got nothing to lose. But when you're a grown man, 
you have something to lose. If you take this bullshit offer, it ends up not being what it was supposed to be. You give up whatever you got going on in your quote-unquote normal life, your quote-unquote real life. So people turn down offers. You have to understand, offers get turned down because teams just can't offer what somebody is doing as an adult in the real world. And this is the real world. There's a real world out there. It's not just, oh, let me go play basketball somewhere. And I know a bunch of players who do these, who do these situations. They have to turn offers down. They walk away from situations because in real life, you know, once the basketball season's over, you still got to go live. You understand? People want to live as adults, and you got to think about the rest of your life. And you retire from basketball, somebody stops playing ball at 35. You still got a whole, you only about 50% through your life. You still got to live the rest of your life. What you going to live off of? What you going to do? If all you've been doing is chasing these bullshit jobs and bullshit contracts all these years, you ain't got nothing to show for it when you walk away from the game. So there are a lot of players who I know who have a lot of talent, a lot of game, maybe even better than me, who've walked away from the game earlier than at ages before the age I'm at right now. And I completely understand that because you got to understand business. This is a business. It's not just about playing ball. If it was all about, if we, everybody in the world had the exact same amount of money and we could all live off it happily ever after, then the whole basketball scene in this world would be completely different, at least as far as overseas goes. Because a lot of people who stop playing because of real life slash business slash adult situations would still be playing if money wasn't a factor. But money is a factor. People need money to live. And that's one of the reasons why people walk away from the game because they're getting these bullshit offers. They don't see nothing better coming through and they got to live a life. They want to live a life like a, a normal person, like an adult. All you, you teenagers out there watching this video, you know, your parents pay for that internet, they pay for that computer and all the clothes you got on, how they pay for it. They ain't pay for it chasing bullshit offers following their emotions. They had to think logically. I got a child out here. I got a support. I got a family. I got to do what I got to do for my family first. And then I could satisfy my wants, emotions, desires second. My parents did it. So I know firsthand. I'm not a, I'm not a parent myself, but I know firsthand that my parents turned down a lot of opportunities that would have fulfilled their wants because they had to fulfill their needs, their children, their family, their adult life. So that's a long tangent, but I had to put that out there so y'all really understand the situation. So me right now, as I said, I'm in Miami, Florida. What am I going what am I going to do this basketball season? I don't know yet. It's up in the air. It's late September. Of course, around this time every year, people start telling me, yo, the D-League, having tryouts, the D-League, this, D-League, that. Listen, I tried out for the D-League last year. It was a tryout in Miami. It was a one-day tryout. I figured there'd be about 30 people there because it was in October. It was 120 people at the tryout. One day, Team Sioux Falls Sky Force, they sent two people to Miami. The head coach and the GM was the only people in the gym. How two people going to watch 120 people try out? You're right. The answer is they can't. <laughs> and pretty much, they didn't pick up nobody from that. Nobody from that camp went to training camp with the Sioux Falls Sky Force now. Me, personally, I had worked some back channels before that camp. I only went to the camp because certain people told me that I had to attend the camp in order to get invited to training camp. And I ended up being... When they ended up doing their training camp situation, I was like in the last three people before they cut it off. Like I think they invite 20 to training camp. I was like between 21st and 23rd on their list. I know this. This is some back, like I said, back channel information. This is not public information, but I'm putting this out there to y'all. The thing about the D-League is I'm not investing any more money in trying out for the D-League. I'm not paying to go to no more camps for the D-League because the camps is pretty much a meat market like a lot of these camps where it's too many players for the evaluators to even watch everybody and the camp is too short for you to even show what you can really do in the amount of time allotted, you understand? And they get players who come out because people are driven by their emotions. Hey, I can play in the NBA. Let me go try out for the D-League. It's only $150. $150 times 100 people, you do the math. If you got a calculator on a new iPhone, iOS 7, just swipe up, calculator right there on the bottom. This is a business. Now, a lot of people got to understand it. Business is just as much a factor as your wants, your needs, your desires. Now, what a lot of us see on TV or talk about on the Internet is people just doing what they want. 
And, you know, me personally, I'll get to me personally in a minute, but you see people doing what they want and they think it's easy to just come play professional ball overseas, have a career, an extended career that goes on for years and years where you're basically making a living off of basketball. And it's not easy, it's not so easy to do because you can see how few people are actually doing it, relatively speaking. I mean, there's so many right in our face that it seems like everybody's doing it. But that's really not the case. Me, personally, I've been able to, you know, I got work on your game, Dre, all day, you too. I've been able to build a brand off of this. And I'm not a person who talks about my personal business. I'm not about to begin. But I've been able to have a, a living from basketball ever since I got out of school for the most part. I've had some ups, some downs. Like I said, it's been years that I didn't have a job playing basketball. There have been years where I did. So it's been up and down. It's, I've worked nine to fives. I've worked a whole bunch of nine to fives in my life. I don't necessarily think business-wise everybody, well, I know business-wise everybody don't have the same situation. Every person got their own personal situation. And most people, actually everybody, got situations in their lives, no matter how much they share with you, whoever you are, your friend, your cousin, your man, they got situations in their lives that they don't talk to you about. And they never will talk to you about because it's personal to them and it's their situation. So you should always weigh that when you're talking about what you think another person should do. Factor in the fact that there are probably a bunch of things going on in their life that you have no idea about and you never will. So think about that when you're thinking about what somebody else might do. Think about the things that are going on in your life that you don't talk about. It's the same thing for every single person you walk past, every single person you see on TV, everybody you know these days. So... Conclusion, what am I going to do basketball-wise this year? I'm a free agent right now. Is it possible I will go back overseas and play? Absolutely. It is definitely possible. If there's a team out there, a player out there, a decision maker out there who's looking for a player, you can get in touch with me. I got my video, resume, all that information ready for you. D-League. Will I play in the D-League? This is the situation with the D-League. I will only play in the D-League if a D-League team invites me to their training camp. I will go to training camp. I think the way the D-League does it, they invite 20 to training camp, 10 make the final roster. There's only 10 people on the roster in the D-League. NBA is like 14 or 15 right now. NBA, same thing. NBA don't have open tryouts, so I would have to get invited to a training camp. If I get invited to a training camp in the D-League or the NBA, will I attend the camp? Hell yeah. If a team overseas wants to sign me, will I go? Probably. Depends on the business. You know, it's too hard. It's hard to just say a, a black and white yes or no because there are a lot of factors that go into it that people don't get. It ain't just about playing on the teams. If it was just about playing on a team, I'd be in some country right now playing. I could play for some team for free right now. They take it. You know what they got to lose? Oh, you'll play for free? Come on, let's go. Here's your uniform. Practice tomorrow at 6 o'clock. You understand? So there's a lot of factors that go into it. So I know this video is kind of long-winded, but a lot of you ask me a lot of questions like, Questions is more on a personal side of things that I don't really get into. I'm not a person who talks about my personal business with anybody, but this is probably as close as it's going to get, at least for now, up to this point. So hopefully this satisfies a lot of your uh, desires to get that information. I got into a lot of stuff right here. If you followed along, if you watched this whole video, let me know. <laughs> Make sure you hit the thumbs up if you did watch this whole video. Hit me on Twitter. My Twitter is Dre all day. If you want to get a direct response from me quickly, that's the fastest way to reach me. Twitter is Dre All Day. Make sure you catch my website, DreAllDay.com. It has, as I've said a bunch of times, a ton of information about me personally and about basketball as a business and for you as a player. And that's players from high schoolers, young players, 10 years old, all the way up through professional players. And even if you're 40 years old and you just love the game and want to get better, if you're watching this video, you already know what I'm about. You know what I do. I got everything out here. It ain't nothing you can name in basketball as far as drills, working out, skills, mental game that I have not covered. I'm taking the game to the next. I'm taking the game to the future right now. Everything I put out now is something that people ain't even thought about until I did it. And I ain't saying that like I invented the game or nothing like that because no idea is original. Everybody builds on something that came before. But anything you can name in basketball, I done put a video out on it already. That's a fact. 3,000 plus videos, ain't nobody fucking with me when it comes to that. That's just the facts. I had to put that out there. So that's that. Thank you for following along here. I definitely want to hear your opinions. I want to hear your thoughts. I want to hear anything you got to say. Criticisms, praise, questions, comments. Leave it down there in the comments. Work on your game. DreAllDay.com 
this is Fred Medev. I'm from Slovakia. Work on your game.